Well, TIPS is a, a think tank and a research uh, uh, network uh, that uh, provides uh, insight into a number of issues that we're trying to grapple with as government. And the theme of this particular forum, uh, which is about uh, regional industrialization and uh, regional value chains and regional integration, these are very, very important questions that we're trying to grapple with at the policy level right now. Uh, with a number of initiatives, such as the SADAC uh, uh, Regional Industrialization Initiative, such as the SADAC COMES East African Community Process, and the launch of the negotiations to establish a continental uh, free trade area across the continent, all of which are intended to uh, support uh, industrial development on the continent. The issue is that uh, the focus of attention now, and I think correctly so, is, across, is on broadening uh, integration across our existing regional communities rather than deepening integration within them. And I think that uh, it is to do with uh, the fact that uh, the African continent needs to industrialize and move up the value chain. We need to create uh, sizable regional markets that can support industrialization and diversification of our economic activities. And uh, I think we start to find the numbers when we move uh, across our existing regional communities. Of course, I think it's better that we have uh, a, a SADAC market than just a, a, a series of uh, national markets. But uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the SADAC Comes East African community uh, will bring together a very sizable group of their part of the African continent, 600 to 700 million people, uh, with a combined uh, GDP of uh, over a trillion US dollars. That's, uh, that creates uh, enormous possibilities uh, to expand interregional trade and to support uh, industrialization, uh, not just in one country or one part of that uh, region, but in that region more broadly. Apart from anything else, uh, being producers and exporters of primary products is not the best place to be in global value chains right now. The real value is found uh, in uh, the, the value addition that takes place uh, on top of uh, raw materials, be they mining commodities or be they agricultural products. There's no end of research that tells us that. Most of global trade takes place uh, in intermediate products uh, and so on. Uh, but in any case, I think that there are some important structural factors that are underpinning the end of the commodity super cycle, and those are to do with uh, the fact that the Chinese economy, for example, which uh, the China was one of the biggest uh, demanders of, uh, of mineral commodities, uh, China is uh, restructuring its economy. It's turning itself into a more consumption-driven and uh, service-orientated economy, which is a much less uh, mineral-intensive growth path than it used to be on. And uh, I think that that is uh, reflected in um, uh, changing uh, uh, trade patterns that uh, we've all seen uh, over the last uh, year. We've seen uh, uh, the value of our exports to China have not increased. Uh, the volumes may have, I don't know, I haven't uh, checked that. But uh, the value has not increased. The value, in fact, has gone down. Uh, and um, I think that uh, just to hang around and hope that uh, there's going to be a resurgence of um, ma major mineral rent rents that we enjoyed a few years ago is not uh, the, the wisest choice. In any case, the developmental choice is to move further up the value chain. Well, what's happened in the WTO is that there's been a, uh, an agreement that we need to quote-unquote recalibrate, which generally means uh, lowering the ambition. And uh, I think that the um, concern that we have to address is to make sure that that uh, lowering of the ambition isn't just lowering of the ambition in the areas where the developed world uh, are vulnerable, and that's in agricultural trade, where I think we're going to see a very, very modest outcome if we see an outcome. Uh, and uh, we need to make sure that that modest outcome, if that is the outcome, is matched with a modest outcome in industrial tariffs. And I think the concern that I've got as um, uh, Africa, as Africa industrializes, is that if we uh, face a series of industrial tariff cuts imposed on us by the WTO, uh, we may be offered in return not reforms in agriculture, but uh, hypothetical market access in industrial goods in regions where we can't possibly realistically access uh, those opportunities uh, and uh, where the uh, reciprocal obligations could mean 
that uh, regional value chains and the opportunities in regional value chains for the development of productive activities in Africa are undermined by uh, finished products coming from outside. That, I think, is the concern that we're going to have to uh, ensure that the um, uh, result that uh, the ministerial uh, conference comes up with in uh, Nairobi at the end of the year uh, is not uh, um, of that ilk, uh, but is something that supports uh, industrial development on the African continent.